y'all, welcome back. So today I signed up for a glass blowing class. So in this glass blowing class, we're actually gonna make ornaments. So I thought that was kind of in line with the holidays. Um, and, and I've never actually done this before, so we'll see how it goes. But uh, I think it should be pretty fun. And it probably should be pretty fun to watch too, so stick around. Looks kind of like a fiber optic with the, the You're right, fire. that's exactly what's going on there. Same concept. So a lot of people will think it's like hot in your hand. It's just light that's traveling through. Now it can, uh, maybe if you were working on something for a really long time and you had the light hitting your hand, that could burn you. Kind of like a magnifying glass and like sun or something. But uh, we're not going to worry about it. We don't have to worry about it. Right. So, oh, I'm just gonna make an extra one of these guys. Okay. So we have it. How long have you been uh, doing glass blowing for? Uh, I've been working with glass for about 10 years now. It'll be uh, 10 years on Halloween. It's my little anniversary. Oh, that's cool. What got you into it? I just always thought it was fascinating. I'm just. Uh, I was always fascinated by it, and I always wanted to try it, and I just kind of slowly fell into it, found a friend that was doing it, and uh, worked with him some, and helped him build his shop, so I, you know, learned a lot more than just making glass, you know, I learned how to build a table for it, I learned how to do the ventilation, right. and things like that. And I just, uh, just, I love it. I think it's really interesting, so I stuck with it. And so, what are what are these? Are these like uh, tubes to start? Yeah. Well, there. I'm gonna be a stickler on grammar in here. So these are rods. A okay. tube would be hollow. Rod solid. Uh, these are just, you know, we can make anything out of them. Uh, we're gonna make icicles today. It's important. Our blank, our little handle, our the thing that we're gonna make art out of. It's important this is really straight on the handles. That's why I'm making these. We could spend like two weeks on y'all just making these and you wouldn't have them down, you know? This is something that's really, really important. Uh, it's just the basis for anything that you make. You gotta just kind of, you gotta know how to section off a little chunk of glass for whatever project you might need. And that's it's just harder to do, harder to get good at quick. So we, we do the fun stuff in an hour and I do the harder stuff for you. Alright, there we go. You see I'm kind of, you know, I'm sectioning off about what I think we'll need, and then I'm also kind of using heat and gravity to shape it nice, kind of yeah. cylinder-like. And then we still got some extra, whatever, we don't need this. It's nice to have it, just in case. There we go. Those are all going to be hot for like 10-15 minutes, don't even touch them. Did you get some safety glasses? You got some, we, we all got. And you might you might wear some too. You know, I don't want you to have a little spot in your vision. <laughs> it's because of the, the color yeah, of the Yeah, well it'll get so bright. It's UV light, it is hard on your eyes. So uh, we do need to wear the glasses. They also just help us see into the flame and see what's going on. Without the glasses, it's just like bright orange light. And with it, you can see exactly what the glass is doing. So these damn things are so expensive. It's like you buy the economy ones and they're like $210 or something each. Wow. 
And then I'll get a client. It's like every weekend, someone's like, clink, and drop them <laughs> on the ground. And I'm like, ouch. <laughs> I'm gonna have to buy another pair. We just I just shipped six broken pairs to Mark. He's gonna get them fixed at Walmart. So where is Mark? He's in Massachusetts. So let's talk about that stuff too. Mark and I met here. He was doing this Groupon thing himself. Uh, he had a different. He had smaller torches and he had more of them. And we we met through Facebook just randomly. And I'm I was like, hey man, I love talking about glass. I love showing my friends. But I've never taught it before. I'd love to get into this. And we just had lunch one day and really hit it off. And I started working for him and we kind of, we transitioned more. Uh, this is my torch. So uh, we don't have the smaller, multiple ones. I think it's safer to do this. Cause I've had classes where we had one torch over here and one over there and this guy's having trouble and this guy's having trouble. And I just, I wasn't comfortable with having to right. run around and help people. So this is much safer and less stress. So I like that. Um, and then after we really got kind of set up here more and I was teaching for more, he met his fiance here and they're both from up uh, New England. So they moved up there and he's building a shop just like this up there. It's pretty much as big as this whole building. He has the whole building to himself. So he really wants to make a nice studio. It's gonna be really cool, I think, when he's finished. Okay, so we're going to be working on this propane oxygen torch. We all got our safety glasses right. You don't have to worry about adjusting the torch. We just spend the whole day talking about how to use the torch. So don't don't mess with it. I'll be adjusting it for you. I will say this brand does pop here and there when you first light it. So I'm going to try to keep it really quiet, but don't be alarmed if it makes a lot of noise. There we go. Cool. So this is like our just propane flame. This is like 700 degrees. It's hot but it's not hot enough to do anything to the glass. We might use this here and there to preheat um, and you know, difficult projects. Today, we don't need to worry about that. So we add our oxygen, we get this really hot flame. This is like a 2000 degree flame. So this flame, you can't put your hand through. This will burn you in an instant. Uh, it is really cool, it's, it's short, it stops there. It's warm right here, but it's not gonna burn me. So, uh, don't need to put your hand out there anymore. Anyway. We're going to be using, this is a cool torch, it's got an inner fire and an outer fire. So we can, we have a whole range of flames we can use. We're going to be using kind of a neutral flame. So this is like a little small and it's got an even balance of the two gases. So what we want to do on these pieces, I made them this morning, they're a little warm, but by the time you get to them, they're going to be room temperature again. Uh, we don't want to get oil from your skin on it, so don't just grab it, touch it. It could still be hot too, you never know. So keep that in mind. Um, really kind of remind yourself that anything that's been in that flame could be hot. And so there's no need to touch it really. That's why we use these nice safe handles all the time. So anyhow, we talked about all that. We do need to preheat this piece and bring it up to this nice temperature range so that we can strike colored glass onto it. This glass won't stick to this if this isn't preheated and warmed first. So to do that, what we're gonna do first is focus the tip in the flame. Once we get this guy hot, we're gonna let it cool again, and then we can really get into the center and heat all this glass without worrying about it cracking or anything like that. So we're just gonna rotate this in the flame. Just that first, what I, what I call like a flame's width. And what I mean by that is where we don't really have glass hanging on the outside of the flame, we're just focused right on that end. And you'll notice the more you rotate, the more you just keep that in the flame, the, the more that heat will build into it. And this glass is really neat. The more you heat it, the more that, that glass wants to gather at that hot point. So right here where it's real hot, that glass is heating everything next to it. That stuff wants to move over there. It wants to be hot. So it'll slowly start to gather and condense on that end. That's how we make marbles and things like that. Just, just heating this will turn into a round ball. We're not going for a marble today. We're just preheating this step though. So that's pretty good. That's what we're looking for. So we're gonna come out of the flame and give this a little bit of pause so it's not sliding around and moving here. We just want this pretty hot, but not super hot. All right, so now that it's cooled back off and gotten a little more stable, I can heat the center without all that glass wobbling around and being hard to control. 
So we really, we really only needed to heat the center part to stripe it, which is our next step. But to get to this heating the center part, we had to heat the tip first. That's, that's the order. Okay, and so this is a pretty good preheat here. Now, this is like around 1600, 1800 degrees Fahrenheit. This is really hot, and the key here is it's gonna hold that high temperature for a bit. We're just buying ourselves working time, so we have all the time in the world to stripe it. When we make these ornaments, we're gonna stripe it with four stripes of glass all around the piece. Once we have those four stripes on there, we'll attach a handle, and that'll give us all the control to really shape it, turn it into that ornament. We're gonna do two and two. If you want, you can do like all four colored stripes, or you can just do clear stripes. If you really love clear, you can do clear too. I'll, I'll get you out a thicker, thicker clear rod to, to lay stripes with. Let me know what you like. So I'm gonna get ready to lay stripes here, and laying stripes, we just wanna stay real kind of safe where our hand isn't right here by that torch face. We're just kind of out here to the side with that clear alongside the flame. I'm heating my color about a flame's width again, right here, kind of midway in the flame. And what I'm gonna do is bring my clear in. This is so dang thick, it's not gonna get hot and malleable in a short amount of time. So I'm gonna bring my clear into the flame, catch this guy on the top hand side and lay my stripe down the piece. To lay this stripe, really, it's more kind of about just pressing the glass towards the clear and it naturally kind of lays down once it's warm. So I'll show you what I'm talking about. So it's a little bit of a little bit of drawing and dragging but more feeding glass into the flame. Picture that. So I have this hot, it's already hot because I've heated it a bunch. We're gonna catch that on the clear and watch how I just kind of press towards this clear. I'll use this angle so you can see a little better. And that helps that stripe just lay down. Notice where I'm heating there on my color too though. I'm heating it what on what needs to move next. I'm heating that part of the color rod that's about to move shortly after. So there we go, we got a stripe down the piece. I'm done with my stripe. I'm gonna superheat that little spot and I wanna separate it. I make sure it's warm and then I gently draw apart and I find that little thinnest point of glass, I find that in the flame, that's what lets it cut. If you're not in the flame, it's just gonna stretch, 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 and then break. So be cautious, we wanna really kinda of always be working in the flame. We don't wanna stretch out those dangerous whiskers. All right, so we got one stripe on, I'm just gonna do the same thing. I like to balance from like one side to the other, instead of going around it, I end up with a little nicer stripes that way, I think. So same deal. I'm gonna catch this on, and then right when I catch it on, I'm heating just like that next spot of color. And I'm like always ahead of myself. You know, I'm always uh, two steps ahead of myself. Heating what's about, what's gonna have to start moving in a moment. I never know how to say that. Heating what's about to move next. So same deal, I'm gonna catch this on, and then the moment I have it on there, before that glass cools back off, I get it right back in the flame, and I'm heating that area of glass that needs to move next. When y'all are working, just work sideways like this, but I'm using this angle so you can see a little better. And a lot of it is really just pressing on that clear. Really key here that we go nice and slow so we get a thicker stripe. I want you to leave a lot of color on there. I don't want you to be light-handed with it. Excuse me. All right, so we've got two stripes of white on there. I'm gonna swap colors. Uh, we're gonna have all your colors out for you in advance. I'm gonna hand you anything you'll need, so don't just like set stuff down and pick it up without me handing it to you. You never know if something's warm or you could brush your hand on something else that was warm that you're not picking up. That's kind of the main way I burn myself, is like using my tweezers and getting them really hot and then a moment later bumping my hand on I, I do it all the time still, so I'm gonna hand you everything you'll need. I don't want anybody getting nicked by some hot glass. All right, 
it's amazing how you can see the difference in the flame. Yeah. The glasses really do a lot. The glasses do so much. So this blue, blue is a much more dense color. So it's gonna move a lot slower. We gotta be patient for it. It's gonna look hot, yeah, because it glows orange, but that's just because it's so dang dark. You know, it's not letting that light out very well, so it gets bright fast. That doesn't mean it's quite hot though. So we gotta go real slow with it. We're just gonna be patient because we want that real thick stripe again. Kind of hard of you feel sorry. You're right. A lot of this is really reactionary in my feel. You want to really press onto that clear until you feel that it's solid on there. We don't want any gaps in between the color and the clear. That's kind of important because if there's a gap there, that color is just going to pull away from itself and we'll get like a dotted line here. Wherever you have a gap, it's going to, it's going to melt away. So keep that in mind. It'll still melt into itself on either side of that gap, but you'll have a little space in your line. So really just kind of, a lot of this, it's important, we have like a range of temperatures we can work in. So it's important, we're not really getting it on that, we're not trying to work on that low end of the temperature, where we're not having to force the glass. But it's also a lot easier if you don't get it quite just soupy hot, molten hot. You want it in that kind of medium range where you can kind of feel what's going on and react accordingly. But mainly, usually what I see in classes is I'm having to like slow people down. Like every time I'm like, slow it down. Mainly I don't want you going fast and like bumping yourself or not laying a very good strike or having gaps on it. Just mainly go real slow, give that glass time, you know, watch it. And I'll do the same thing. I'm gonna talk you through each stripe and every step. Okay, so now that we've got our stripes on there, it doesn't look like much, I know, but I promise it's gonna look really cool in a little bit. We're gonna attach a handle now, and we want this handle to be a very nice fuse. We want it to all be one piece of glass. And what I mean by that is we're not just sticking them together, we get them both the same temperature, and then we apply them together to where it's all one seamless piece of glass. It's important, this is a good connection, because this is going to end up being our hook or our loop on those little ornaments. So to get this nice connection, we got to get both pieces the same temperature. This left-hand side is much thicker. Let's spend more time heating it first. So since you're reheating the glass, it doesn't want to reshape itself? not hot enough yet but it does and what's glass is weird it kind of it has memory it'll want to go back to this original shape it was in before you ever worked it um, but usually you know something like this the more you heat it it's just going to turn into like a ball we would get like a little bit of a beach ball on the end there because of our pattern all right so I'm just spending time what I'm trying to do is really just heat that spot of clear there things we can do here to speed this up. We can give this a little bit of angle to where we make sure that flame is wow, hitting that spot right in the middle, kind of getting around, wrapping around those stripes. And now that's white hot, that's great, time to go. So that's hot, let's start heating this one up. And so this, is we're getting the glass hotter than you ever have so far. It's going to be way soupier than you think. Don't just stab this up in there. There's going to be nothing to stop you. It's just going to keep pushing in, and we don't want that. We don't want uh, like a cleave point where there's like a crater with this glass in it. We want this to all be like seamless and smooth, like a tree trunk coming out of the ground. Picture that. So I'll show you what that looks like. And first off, this is really hot when we apply them together. So we have time when you apply them to kind of slide this guy center. We want to find that center point. Don't do that a lot. Just find that center point. And then we keep rotating. It's still hot. We're working on the angle now. So we just keep rotating. We just want this to be a good handle that's easy to use. That's all we're doing here. Later, just a little quarter inch of this is going to be the loop. Right now, it's just a handle. It's just a easy to use handle. 
All right, and as I've been talking, this is cooling off. So now we're gonna focus this guy in the flame, and what happens, we're gonna heat the center part and really just focus the flame here. That heat is gonna soak from the center and gently soak outwards the deeper it gets into the piece. So it heats from the outside in and then it slowly widens that heat. So what we wanna do is focus our flame here and be patient. And remember, we have that range of temperature we can work in. Right off the bat, we get a thin strip of glass in the center that's super hot, but this is it's not good to make our ornament with. So like right now, I can come out of the flame and really twist this up, but like just this little spot in the center would twist. We don't want that. We want that whole thing to twist up. So we gotta be patient. We gotta give that heat time to soak outwards, both sides. Probably gonna be like your hardest step. Making that actual ornament, we make that in like four seconds. That's fun and exciting. This is hard and stressful. So just be patient with it. Don't get in your head. You know, just understand this is hard, you know. And you're trying to get that center piece to be white hot just We're like it was. We're getting all the of top. it to be more like medium hot. Okay. We don't want it quite white hot. White hot it would already just it would be turning like round. So here it's like wonky. It's it it really wants to twist and do whatever do whatever it wants to do. Your are you holding its shape? Can you keep it just because I am keeping its shape. Okay. So that's that y'all are gonna have trouble here. It's gonna want to twist, you're gonna want to stretch pull your hands apart. It's really important you don't pull this thing in half. Because if we pull it in half, we're gonna kinda lose our stride. We can push it back together and still make an ornament, but it's not gonna have the same look as those guys. So it's important, we're just kinda heat. Just be patient with it. If I see like a really cold, if like one of your sides is really cold, I'm gonna point it out. And that doesn't mean like do this violin stuff, that means just gently scooch it over, heat that side a bit. Looks like his top hand side's a little cold, so I'm gonna bounce over here a little. And really this is good to go. This is good to shape the ornament. We're not gonna just bounce out of the flame. We wanna have our game plan in mind. We wanna know what hand's gonna do what. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna pop out of the flame, we're gonna twist, twist, twist this thing up, and then as it cools off, we stretch our hands apart a little bit. So I'm right-handed. I suggest just twisting with your dominant hand, and just stop your non-dominant hand. Use it as an anchor. This won't twist if you don't stop one hand. So just to have those, you know, know what you're gonna do in advance. So I know I'm gonna stop my left hand, I know I'm gonna twist with my right, I know I like to twist this direction, so I know I wanna go that direction. So we're ready, we have our game plan in mind. I'll warn you when your piece is hot enough. So what we're gonna do, we don't shape in the flame. That flame adds way too many variables, makes it way harder to control. So we pop up out of the flame, we get our twist going first. We twist, 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 twist. Now here, as it kind of cools, it's losing temperature, we can't twist it as much, we stretch. And this way we get a thicker ornament. We don't have like quite a, we don't want a thin, sharp ornament or it'll break easily. So we just gently stretch some. This is still warm, the two ends are warm, but I don't want to shape it anymore. I'm just going to let it chill. This is a good shape, I'm just going to let it hang out, cool off, get solid again. Do you have some uh, tension when you're pulling, or is it just... What's that? Do you have, is there any tension? Or Not it... much, it's pretty loose. There's really, it's it's really loose. That's why we got to be gentle and slow with it. Or you can easily just like, whoa, make a big old hair. You know, we don't want to do that. Okay, so there we go, it's nice and solid. We're going to cut our handle back off of this side. And leave yourself this is going to be our hook so we're going to do our best to have it match our piece we don't want this big two inch hook on a two inch ornament right we want it to kind of be functional but not take away from an ornament so just kind of i'm going to help you i'll suggest what i think but when you're doing this it's just a flame cut where we heat a spot and then just kind of gently pull find that thin point get the thin glass in the flame 
and just your, your natural variance in your rotation will separate those two. All right, so there we go. We got our, our little post there for our loop. I'm gonna hand you some tweezers. And you wanna heat the area, this is something uh, you gotta remember, try to keep the area in the middle where you want it to bend and try to leave this little spot cold so you got something to grab a hold of. If you grab orange flash, you're gonna mush it. I promise. And really, we can let gravity do a lot of the work, so we're just gonna come out of the flame and watch that go. It just kinda goes along. We can push it. We don't need much. You can kinda just push it along. Or you can kind of grab it and rotate your wrist up as you go forward and you'll kind of get more of a U shape. That's a little more advanced. Really just kicking it to the side is fine. And I say the less you mess with that, the nicer it looks. Okay, so once you get into this step, I'm going to help you finish it up. Or I'll help you get it off the handle. I always do my best to kind of match your twist and match your pattern and we'll get a little bit of a drip on the bottom, a little melty drip. Kind of main safety in here, definitely can't hit our lines with hot glass. These, these lines, that's very important. I've never seen that happen in any, in any class, but very important we don't burn those lines. They're really strong anyway, they're heat resistant. Really important, we're not touching any glass that has been in the flame or might be hot. You know, don't find out the hard way, the lame way. I guess it's an easy way to find out. Not that it's hard, it sucks. And so there we go. You'll see we always have a little, little bit of scrap on our handle, that's okay. I'm not gonna be mad at you like that's waste or anything like that and don't feel like you have to get that little bit on your ornament with there's plenty of glass there. All right. Should have more of these damn pads out. So there we go. Something like this, something fairly simple that we kind of make all in one go. We can cool off on these fiber pads. Y'all can take them home today more intricate things, more kind of blown ornaments, stuff like this. This guy, or especially like a marble, we'll cool those off in the kiln, like over overnight. Where we just cool it down real slowly. So that's actually a flat piece? Yeah. Can you teach that here as well? Yeah. We have the students do a pattern on the top, and then I just kind of finish them up. Because they are really, working the hollow glass is really tough. And those are like three mil thin. That's how thick that wall is, <coughs> which is pretty thin. These things are 20 millimeters. That's why we y'all start out with really thick glass at first. The thinner glass gets, the faster it gets hot, the harder, the more lost you are, kind of, with how hot it gets. Well, cool. You have any kind of questions or safety concerns? As far as the colors and the tools go, I'll just hand you anything you'll need. But make sure you're always setting that hot end down away from you. That way, neither one of us are accidentally bumping it. And you don't have to use the rod rest. You can just set it down. That's fine. I'll move it out of the way. That way, there's no hot glass sitting around. Well, all right. Who wants to go first? You want to do, do some blues? Blue and white? Blue and white? Yeah. Cool. Oh, white. What would a green and a blue look like? Are they both too Looks cool. I got a, like a weird smidge of a sparkly blue over there, I think, too. Uh, you know, blue and caramel looks really cool. That's this one here? Yeah. Yeah. All right, here we go. Yeah, and caramel is in the same family as the Loki lipstick. It's just like an opaque version, more opaque version. So you can get a lot of variants out of it too. All right, so same deal. You want to hold that pretty centered. Try to get your fingers under it to cradle it. And try just try thin, rotating. Right? Just yeah, just kind of that front quarter of it. Okay. Yeah, right about there. Yep. 
I don't want to get tired. It can happen. Yeah, and y'all might leave a little hungry. I feel like this always. You got no teeth to blow? No, well, no. I feel like this always <laughs> gets me really starving when I work. It's a lot of concentration. Yeah. Yeah, and then you all, it's funny, I'll be like starving and then I go eat more than I should. And then I'm like tired, I can't work because I ate over eight or something. I do it like every weekend. When I'm trying to make some stuff for myself, I always do it. Alright, so that's getting pretty good. Your, yours is heating really fast for you. Keep that rotation to come out of the flame. Don't jump forward quite yet because then we'll have the whole thing hot and it'll be a hard, hard to control. Yeah, just give it a little bit of a pause. Bit of time cools off just about as fast as it heats up. All right, now let's get back in and just keep that center, that bulkier glass in the middle. Right? What's that? In the, in the middle. Yeah. 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 Just, that I know there's a blue over there that I found. I found in a box and put it in there. Put it on the pile yesterday. There should be a pretty interesting blue. Maybe not that one. Try next to let's look next to the light blue. Is it that one? Yeah. It's yeah. a sparkle blue. Yeah. Keep that rotation going. We're gonna come out of the flame. It's gonna get uh, wonky soon. Yeah. Come out of that flame. Keep that rotation going, and we'll give it a little strategic pause here and there. Now keep up with it. Tell you what, though. It was warm sitting over there and hot over there. That was the question I was going to ask you. Yeah, well, wait until you make one of the marbles. This is the whole so thing is like 2,200 degrees. That's really throwing heat off. You can, you can get sunburns on your face when you're working like big time in here. These projects are very small, I promise. Like as far as projects go. All right. Yeah, and you said blue and white, right? Yeah. Okay. White first, one that needs blue with the family. So that white, that white is way, it's like thinner than clear. Okay. So we don't need much to get it moving. We've got to be a little gentle on that. We're going to work it a little further away. All the other colors are pretty user friendly, but this one we're going to be a little careful with. And then let's adopt your that 90 degree angle where your clear is sitting over here waiting to okay. exactly waiting for that strike. No, keep it still. So that's going to get hot in a moment. Bring your clear even closer. Bring your clear in the flame. We're going to lay that stripe in the flame from the top down to the bottom. And then flame. There you go. And really just press on. Go by feel. Once you get a better feel for it as you go through them, you'll feel even more comfortable. All right, this should be pretty good. Kind of pause there, draw the side. Cool, all right. Same thing, right? Yeah, a little further out. Be gentle on that color. I can see it's really wanting to melt into that clear on the bottom half of your stripe. It's nice to have that texture to twist. Okay, let's go ahead. This should be good. Lay that stripe. Go for it. Try to focus your plane more on your color rod rather than your clear. There you go. Again, okay. we'll pause and draw it towards me to the right. Cool. So you can just set that one down, swap over to blue. There you go. And you'll see that blue will take a lot longer to get hot than the white. Rotate. Have your clear hanging out though, real close. Does the clear need to be warm to um, adhere? Yeah. 
Yeah, that's what our first step is. Yeah. If you don't do that, it'll like crack when you try to stick, stick stuff to it. It'll also like reflect it. It won't even really stick. Now here and there, if that glass is like super hot, it might, yeah, it might warm up that clear a little, but it'll still kind of deflect it and just usually just crack the clear. That's fine. So just like your other ones, if you have that flame with hot, you can go. Then we get to stretch. And then 
hold it static on the left. Yes. Start to put it there. Yeah, I think that's probably ready. So let's come up out of the plane. Twist a little more, a little more. And stretching will, you know, get you some more. And not too much. We don't want it too thin. Let's kind of stop here. Move both hands, same direction. A little bit of outward tension always kind of straightens it out. Picture it like a rope. We don't want it to slack. And just let it cool. Very nice. Right. Clean. Awesome. And as soon as that feels solid again, we're going to cut our handle off of that right hand side. Give that a moment. Yeah, for that. Those two ends always stay hot much longer. All right, right about there is cool. So about an inch above the piece. We're gonna heat that and separate. Like that? Yeah. Good. Now that's warm, kind of gently draw. Keep the thin glass in the plane. Cool. So you can set that down. Get your tweezers handy. Yeah. Now, so you want to heat the center. It's not hot yet. Yeah, heat the center where you want it to bend. A little more, a little more, and then like right here, we, we got plenty of time. Very cool. Nice. There we go. That'll work. Awesome. Gonna help you finish that up. Okay. Nicely done. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you for being patient. No, no worries. Thank you. <laughs> they, these stripes aren't fully melted in here. So that's going to probably lead to a crack. Um, you can do something where we attach a handle over here after we've done all this and then separate this off and then you have a handle to work on this stuff and melt it in. But you can't just like lead, you can't just like cut it and be like, all right, it's done. This it'll like shear all the way up there in, in a week or something. You know, there's no telling when it'll do it, but it will. I would say it's just like not museum quality at that point. Whereas these can be, you know, museum quality glass. That doesn't mean a museum will bind them, but they can be, you know, structurally sound and nice. You know, that's what we're going to play here. Yeah, you can get it. You gotta talk to the buyer and see if he's buying this way. I'll tell you, he's usually not. I'm usually more worried about lunch. So, meeting the ends up like that, you wouldn't be able to leave the bottom part round? Uh, I can get it to where it's structurally sound for you and leave it like that if you really want. I think it'll look nicer with a little drip, but whatever you want to do, you can do that. Just a question. It's just kind of, it's hard for you to do it. You know, I would have to kind of finish it up for you still. But see what I did in that whole step is I got it all real hot and melted that all in. So I know we're not gonna have to worry about any of those things I just mentioned. And then I still pull all off all this crap. Because I'll tell you, when you lay those stripes, your ends aren't really that nice. The ends of the stripes, they're very not well melted in. So that's why we kind of move quick and move along. Because that piece can't crack on you while you're making it. And it's always the ends of the stripes where that happens. There we go. So I just, I just really rarely trust any of that stuff on any student's work. That's why I don't really leave leave it on there. Nice. Very cool. Alright, this one is still a little warm. It's not going to burn you. You can check it out though if you want. And really, if you shine your flash through it, you can really see your, a lot of the paint tone and that That's color. Pretty. Well, if you enjoyed this video, please make sure to hit that like and subscribe button. And I'll see you on the next one.